Hello authors and welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. We are going to jump right in and start looking at one of the things that every author needs who wants to expand their platform, who wants to engage more with their readers, and really who wants to find where their readers are at and continue a relationship with them long past every interview that you do and every opportunity that you have to be in front of them. I'm Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. I am an author of three books, as well as a media personality and author coach. And I'm gonna take some time today and just really, we're gonna dive deep into why you need an effective lead magnet. So let me get the slides pulled up here and we will jump right in. Now, for each of you, I wanna start with really what, why do we even need to have a lead magnet? So let me just give you a little bit of the framework of how our time together is going to flow. <clears throat> we're going to start off with looking at why you need a lead magnet. Then we're going to look at some different types of lead magnets that are effective, that work, that actually help you to convert people from just casual acquaintances to ongoing fans that are buying your books over and over. We're going to take a look at the process. How do you go from no idea to coming up with a lead magnet as well as how to automate it? so that you don't have to keep doing work every time you wanna to add to your author platform and start growing your list. Now, this is the thing. If you don't have a lead magnet, then you probably have already experienced some of this. You struggle to stay connected with your readers. You have a hard time being able to see a return on your investment. You may have done many, many radio and podcast interviews and they seem pointless. You're like, I don't see any change in my book sales, I don't see any change in my email list. This is why, without an effective lead magnet, those interviews can look like a waste of time. And you miss a lot of opportunities for non-book related additional income. Once you have an effective lead magnet, you're able to easily engage with those readers because now they're on your email list. Now you're able to go back to them multiple times after that interview, keep engaging with them, and then if they didn't want to purchase maybe on their first touch with you, now they've had an opportunity to learn more about you. They've had an opportunity for you to show your level of expertise and you're more likely to get the sell that way. Plus it opened doors for a lot of non-book related opportunities like speaking and being able to sell any courses or additional products that you may have related to your book. What is a lead magnet? That may be the very first question that you're thinking of. Well, it's really simple. A lead magnet is, is just a desirable freebie. It's something that your reader wants bad enough that they're going to give you their email list, their email, and be added to your email list. So it needs to be something that they really feel like they can't resist. It has to be something that's going to help them move forward in some direction, whether that's solving a problem or fulfilling a desire. It has to be something that moves them to give you that information. Now, once you have their email, you have to have a system in place. We call it a nurture sequence. It's an automated system through your email provider where you are going to stay in contact. You're going to continue to give them good content. You're going to continue to nurture that new relationship that you've developed virtually with them through that email subscription platform. And that nurture sequence should change the transaction from just being a casual acquaintance where you just they just saw you on the radio or they saw you or heard you rather in a podcast to now they're being able to engage with you multiple times through this nurture sequence where you're sending them emails spread throughout a specific time frame. Now, this is the thing, not every lead magnet is effective. Your lead magnet needs to help the person see why they would want to buy your book. So it needs to be aligned with your book's theme and your book's topic, because that way you're creating that hunger. You're, you're showing just a little bit of what they can get if they dive deeper with you and engage fully with the book you've written. So let's take a look at five key elements really to an effective lead magnet. These are the five things that every lead magnet must have in order for them to convert and help you to actually get people signed up for them. The very first part of that is that you, your lead magnet needs to focus on a felt need. 
it can't just be something that's fun because sometimes that's not going to convert very well. There's a lot of ways that people can get information online. So your lead magnet needs to be something that is answering a question, specifically hitting on a desire or targeting a specific problem for your reader. That is related also, as we mentioned, to your book. So you want to start thinking about the first question, if you don't have a lead magnet, is what is something that my reader's concerned with? What is something that they are looking for answers about or that they really would love more motivation in? That's where you begin with your lead magnet. And if you are having trouble thinking up some ideas, I wanted to make sure that we take a look at lead magnets for both nonfiction authors as well as fiction authors. Because often I'm finding that nonfiction authors, they, they get it. They understand that a lead magnet can be multiple different ways of taking the content and information that they have learned and, and but really just putting it into a different format. Sometimes my fiction friends have a little bit harder time imagining what their lead magnets can look like. So I want to give you some examples of both. Let's start with the nonfiction. Nonfiction, what I recommend, take whatever your topic is of your book and think of a way of narrowing down just one small area that is of high concern for your audience and creating something that they can engage with and learn a quick nugget and feel like they got a quick win from your information because that's what's going to convert them to wanting to buy the book. So some examples and the one that I used and saw the most success with was a quiz. People wanted to know where they fell within the assessment. And so I created a quiz that allowed them to be able to see with my book, Sacred Rest, where they stood in the different areas of rest, which ones were deficient, which ones they were excelling at. And that ended up being very successful, as we'll talk about later as we go into some of the different graphics. The next type of lead magnet for nonfiction is something that's called a checklist. If you have uh, kind of a way that people can quickly assess themselves, it doesn't have to be an automated quiz. It doesn't have to be this big kind of production where you have to get a quiz app and you have to do all of these things that may be very techy. It could be a simple checklist where somebody can check off yes or no if that applies to them. And that's a simple way of being able to, to help people to identify and to be able to determine if they need your book. Another is a webinar. Webinars can be automated and that you can sit down with your camera and record the entire thing with no one live and then set it up so that people as they sign on will get a short teaching from you that will walk them through a process. If you're a coach, if you're in the self-care space with your book, if you're someone who's in any area where it would be beneficial for the person to talk to you, and especially if you're someone who has additional services like coaching, 15 minute sessions, we sometimes call them breakout sessions or laser focused sessions. Basically it's an opportunity for someone who's interested in your work to go deeper with you through a phone call or a video chat. This is something that I only recommend for those who actually have something additional to their book to sell because there's a, there's a much huger time investment with this. And so keep in mind, you don't have to just pick one type of lead magnet. You can do some A-B testing and have multiple types of lead magnets. I think right now I probably have about 15. You can have lead magnets for every book and every book can have multiple lead magnets. So you can see what works best for different audiences and in different situations. A mini course is another great way to take the content that you already have and then put it in a form that is easy for people to consume. And so a mini course, what you'll do with that is you'll want to make it something that is behind your email server lock screen. So what happens is they don't just go into like a, a course platform and receive the content. You're going to want to make it so that they have to initially sign up to your email list before they get the information or the details even on how to get that free mini course. And many courses do not have to be long. Five, 10 minute videos, two or three, five to 10 minute videos, a couple of little handouts that you put together on Canva. If you're not familiar with Canva, it's a free graphic design 
app, app and it's actually online that you're able to go in and create great graphics with no skill whatsoever. They have all these templates and you just pull the information down. You can do PDFs, you can do images. And so a great way of, of looking at how to start putting together some lead magnets without having to hire someone to do a lot of the work, you can do quite a bit of it yourself. And then finally, for nonfiction, another great thing that you could do include these online communities. So you have the person sign up to your email list and they join an exclusive online community, maybe through Facebook, or maybe you have a forum within your website, however you choose, but they can only get there if they sign up through your email list. And of course, you could always have PDFs and you can always have ebooks. Those are things that people have done really excessively in the past as their lead magnets, and they're not as effective anymore. Oftentimes, authors in the past have used the first chapter of their book or maybe the first two chapters of their book as the lead magnet. And we're seeing that that's not as effective because people can now just go online and look in the inside of the book section when they're browsing and read quite a bit of it before they ever purchase. And so why give you my email address if I can do that for free? So keep in mind, you want the lead magnet to be something that's really exclusive for those who sign up to your list. Now let's look at those who are fiction authors. Fiction, when you're thinking of your lead magnet, really think about the research that you did for that fiction book. Because you're not gonna wanna give the entire story away but there's a lot of background research that went into that topic that you're writing about and that story that you wrote about. So those same people who would be interested in reading your fictional novel would be interested in no more detail about that topic. So if you are a sci-fi fiction writer, you may want to do a video series around some aspect of whatever that sci-fi area is that you're discussing. If you're a fiction writer who includes, maybe you're one who's more contemporary and you're it's more of a kind of feel good family type novel. Maybe somewhere within that novel, you talk about a couple of recipes or you talk about food certain people are eating or dishes that maybe they're making together. If that's the case, why not use your lead magnet to be some of those recipes? You can include short stories. And so if you have a certain genre that you like to write in, do a few novellas completely separate from your book, but gives the reader a sample of your writing style and allows them to be able to see how you flush out your characters and how you kind of interweave the storylines together so that they can understand if they like how you write and if that's something that they would wanna read more of. Extra chapters. If you had to do a big cut and edit out large sections of the chapters and you notice that maybe your, your the early part or the pre-story kind of got cut from, from the final edits, consider using that. Consider using that to kind of set the stage of going into your book even before they buy it. And another free lead magnet can sometimes be audiobooks. And so if a large number of the people who are listening to your books, you find that you're selling more in the audiobook section, then you may want to, instead of having a novella that is just an ebook, you may want to have one that's actually an audiobook version as well, so that you can actually hit both parts of that market that would be interested in the work that you have. Now, the second part of that effective lead magnet is that it needs to be related to your book. I'm often hearing authors say, well, I don't wanna give it all away. I don't wanna tell them everything that's in my book. I get it. Yes, you don't want to give the whole book away. And honestly, if you can give your whole book away within a lead magnet or even in a, a one hour podcast interview, then you probably need to dive a little bit deeper next time with writing that book. That should not even be possible to give it all the way, to give away hours and hours and months of writing within a small section of conversation. So this is the thing, you're not going to give them all of the intrinsic details. What you want to do is in your lead magnet, give them the 10,000 view of your book. Have them look down, see all the different components of what you're covering. 
share one or two key nuggets that would be of high interest to them within the lead magnet from the 10,000 view. So you help them identify that this is an area that, that they are wanting more inf information in. You give them a key nuggets so that they get a little bit of the goodness that's inside of your book, but not the whole thing. And you create an atmosphere where they want to learn more. Now, you get to choose what value-rich information you're going to share within that lead magnet, but it needs to be enough that the person wants to go deeper with you. And it needs to be related to your book. So you don't want to have a fantastic lead magnet that is on space exploration if your book is on self-care because the reader now has a complete disconnect between what your lead magnet talks about and what your book talks about. You want them to align. You want them to be in a situation where when they finish the lead magnet, it's very natural for them to want to go into your book and learn more. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier with my reader focus lead magnet. It's my book is specifically about the seven types of rest that I discovered in my research. And since most of the world tends to be exhausted, I needed to help them be able to see why are they so tired all the time. And so that really was the focus of the lead magnet, answering that question. What's got me so tired? Why is it that I, I feel like there's always something missing in my ability to be rested and restored? And so answering that specific question pulls in the reader and gives me an opportunity to begin the conversation directly with them. And at that point, if I can help them to see what it is that they're missing, if I can help them to think in a new way, open their eyes to what I'm sharing within the book, which is new information for most people, then what happens is they want to dive deeper and that transitions into sales. Now, this is the thing. I can get on a podcast. I can get on a radio or TV interview and share that same information. But if they don't remember the name of the book, if they can't remember my name, then you're going to miss out on most of those sales because they're just going to say, oh, well, that was great information. What happens if they're listening in the car? What if they're on that podcast on the treadmill? Then they don't have any way of even writing down what the information is. This is why an effective lead magnet is so important, because what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to make it so that even if they were on the treadmill and they can't remember my name and they can't remember the book, they can remember the lead magnet URL. You want it to be super easy for them to access your lead magnet online. And sometimes the way of doing that is to develop a custom URL, a custom website address where your reader, when listening to you give an interview, can quickly remember that custom URL. And even if they don't remember anything else, they remember that URL. And when they get off that treadmill, can go type it in and, and engage with your lead magnet. Now, this is the thing with many authors. We've been told for years, you need to have a website under your name. You need to have a website at least related to your blog. You need to have a website you need to have a website, right? You've heard that a hundred times. This is the problem. If your website is under your name, and that's fine to have it that way, but if it's under your name and your name is difficult to spell, if you have a little bit of some, some extra kind of added things to your name, you have an E that's silent, or you have some other things going on that makes your name a little bit more difficult for most people to spell correctly, and you're on your interview and you have to spell out your name when you're giving your website address, what's the likelihood that someone's going to remember that? You ever thought about that? Highly unlikely that someone's going to remember the full spelling of whatever you just said. And so this is why it's so important to have redirect custom URLs in this situation with lead magnets. Don't just send people to your website if you have a complicated name to remember and then expect them to engage because they're not even going to find the website. Yes, podcasts sometimes will put this information in their show notes, 
but you want the person to be able, to, you don't want to have to depend on that. You want the person to be able to easily access your lead magnet online. So an example of an easy custom URL with my lead magnet, the URL was restquiz.com. How easy is that? So I'm talking about my topic. I mention my lead magnet and my topic name, my topic rest and my lead magnet quiz put together for a very simple URL. Now, when I'm having this conversation with someone on their interview for a radio or TV or podcast, I can mention that URL multiple times as a, a way of letting them know about this free assessment that people can have. And what happens is the reader or the listener is hearing this. And because it's so simple, they don't have to remember Go to drdaltonsmith.com. Well, some people put a U in Dalton. So there's much increased like, likelihood that they're not going to find me if I give them my full website address or my name website address. Much more likely they're going to find me if it's a lead magnet based custom URL that is simplified. And I always recommend when you're thinking of these custom URLs, try to be as simple as possible. Think maybe even a phrase, a short phrase that describes the desired outcome. That's always a great lead magnet because you can easily mention within your conversation the name and which is the URL that will help the person to remember how to find you long after those interviews are over. Now, the next part of a effective lead magnet is that it connects to your email server. So it is not going to be helpful if you have a lead magnet that people can immediately get and just download the second they hit your website. Because now you don't have a way of connecting with them again. That's the point. You want to be able to integrate your tribe, build community, have an ongoing relationship with those people that you're able to pull into your website. And the way to do that is every lead magnet should be behind your email server lock. So the, in order for them to get that lead magnet, they have to type in their email address. And once they type it in, your email service will automatically send them a welcome email. This is kind of standard for every email service I've ever seen. They automatically send you a one-time welcome email. And in that welcome email, you would have the details on how the person can get your lead magnet. And so in the situation of my quiz, when they fill out the quiz and they type their email address in, they get a welcome email that has their scores. If you were sending them, let's say, a video course, then they would go to a, a lead page, a page where it leads them into your lead magnet that tells them what it is they're signing up for. You're signing up to get my free mini course and you tell them a little bit about the mini course. They put their email address in, they will get a welcome email from you that states, this is how you claim your free mini course. And at that point, you can send them wherever you need to, to, a, to get the information that you've promised. If it's a download, you can send them to a link on your website that's hidden behind a lock screen to download. If it's a video teaching, like a webinar or a video course, you can have it on Vimeo or YouTube as an unlisted video. You can even have it password protected if you'd like and include the unlisted video link or the video password within your welcome email so that the person now has access to that information that you're sharing with them. And so that this is the process. This is how you automate it, because the only thing you have to be concerned with is getting that URL to your lead magnet out there for people to engage with. Everything else happens automated behind the scenes. And I always recommend, as we talked about in the beginning, a nurture sequence. And that nurture sequence goes beyond that initial welcome email. So that a welcome email is great because that's kind of automated. They expect that. So then you go the next mile and automate a few more emails that will come out maybe in one or two days 
Maybe you have one that comes out every day for the first five days. You get to choose how you want to nurture that relationship, but you want a few emails after the welcome because this is how you build up that relationship with them. This is how you help lead them from just being a casual, quick encounter on that interview to someone who now wants to further engage with you. Now, an effective lead magnet can massively grow your email list. When I first started writing back in 2009 and had my first book come out, I didn't even know you needed an email list. I barely had a website at the time. When we talk about green authors, green, no idea what was needed and how to even engage with it. So this is what I found out as I went because I did so many different interviews. I did probably 50 or so radio interviews. Podcast wasn't out at that time, really. So did so many radio interviews and saw so little growth. And I'm like, this is pointless. Why would anybody waste so much time in doing all of these interviews when you just get a little trinkle of books that come that get sold usually on the day of the interview? Then I started looking at what I needed to change with my second book. And that's when I first came up with an idea for a lead magnet. It was a five day challenge is what I called it. And it was videos that I put up on YouTube that were in a unlisted format that I embedded within five emails with a little devotional that went with it. My second book was a devotional, Come Empty. So I included a little one of and it had 80 devotions. So I didn't use those 80 because I wanted them to buy the book. I came up with five new devotions that included video with me talking and showing some pretty imagery and music and all of that with the videos. Well, that was a hit because I could talk about the freebie during the radio shows and get people signed up for that freebie, which then let them see how I write devotionals which then if they are someone who enjoy those and many people do them daily, led them into my nurture funnel and became people who were buying the book. And by the time I got to my third book, I was like, I think I might be onto something here because my email list had grown from zilch to 2000 with that book. And that's a very niche audience. So specifically people who were interested in devotionals. So I thought, okay, what happens if you take that same process and you you actually put it on a much bigger scale, you integrate the lead magnet into everything you do, including the initial marketing for the book. So I wrote my lead magnet and came up with the idea for the quiz even before I wrote the book because I wanted to make the lead magnet necessary even for those who are reading the book because somebody happens to pick it up in Barnes and Nobles they may not necessarily think they need to actually go get signed up on the list, but you definitely want that person because they're engaging with the book already. So I ingrained the lead magnet actually inside the book. Chapter three says, go to restquiz.com and take this assessment right now before we go any further. So now even those people who didn't find me through the lead magnet, just found me organically are being integrated into the list. And the growth was massive. My list went from that initial 2,000 to now it's over 30,000 and continues to grow. And I'm someone who likes to weed my list out. So I'm constantly actually removing people who, because as you know, after you get above a certain number, you're paying for every one of those people on your email list. So I'm constantly weeding out my, lead, my email list because I find that that's my sweet spot. About 35,000 is my sweet spot where I'm getting 60% open rates and not 20% open rates, which is the standard in our area. So this is what I want you to keep in mind. You can grow your list as big as you want and you get to control your list. You don't have to let it get to 500,000 and pay for people who aren't actually engaging. You get to maintain control of your list and make it a list of your top fans. So every time you get ready to release another book, you've got a list of people who actually want to hear what you have to say and are ready to engage with it. Now, that list can grow really fast. As you can see, this is just, I did this just recently before um, setting all of these slides up. 
And so this was from March to April of this year. Every month, I get about 2,000 people added. You can do the math on how many people I could potentially have on my list if I wanted it to just grow massively. You get to decide. You may want to have 200,000 people on your list that you're getting the standard 30% open rate. Personally, I like to have a smaller list where I'll, almost everybody, almost 70% of them are opening it every time I send it to them. But that's your choice. Wouldn't it be better to be able to determine how many people you want on your list, how many you want to keep that nurtured relationship with? And the effective growth really is just a matter of automation. The only thing that I do is I mention the lead magnet at every opportunity. The last part of the five features of an effective lead magnet is you want to have a call to action. Now, it would be wonderful if you know your lead magnet is helping people and, and changing lives, and that's all great, just like your book is. But to be able to get the pe your people from the lead magnet to actually the book, you have to ask them. That's what the call to action is. It's an opportunity to invite the person who's engaging with you to the next step of working with you. And so that could be your book. If you're a coach, that could be your coaching sessions. Whatever it is, is your next step of engagement. But you definitely have to make the ask. Don't assume that because they loved your lead magnet, they're going to automatically in their mind think, you know what, I should go buy that book. They may not. So you want to in your nurture sequence. And what I do is my nurture sequence is your welcome email. And then there's a three part kind of nurture sequence that comes that is every day for three days directly after. And every one of those emails for those three days includes some ask. I actually put more than one call to action. One of them's an ask for them to purchase the book. And if they're not quite ready to purchase the book, I have another freebie that gives them a little bit of a deeper look into the book through a through a U version Bible reading plan. There's so many different ways you can do freebies, so many different ways you can incorporate that. And so I want you to think outside of the box, depending on who your audience is, you can tailor multiple freebies so that the person and they're still not getting your whole book. You're still not giving it all the way. You're just giving another little nugget, just a little bit more to make them hungry for what it is you share in the totality of your book. And then finally, I want us to take a look at where do you place your lead magnet? Because yes, you're going to definitely share it during any media interviews. But what if you're someone who really doesn't want to do interviews. You Maybe you're a, an introvert. You're like, I don't really want to do radio, podcast, or TV. That's not my deal. You still have multiple ways of sharing your lead magnet with people. The very first place is your website. This is an image of my website. And if you can notice at the very top line, that little grayed out section, it says, yes, sign me up. That's an ask for the lead magnet. Right up under there, it says, take the rest quiz, find out what type of rest you've been missing. That Click on that banner, takes you to the lead, a, a different lead magnet. And then if you notice, there's a pop-up that happened that said a little happiness for your inbox with a subscribe now, another lead magnet. You want your lead magnets to be immediately seen by anyone who comes to your website. And I hit people with multiple different ways, depending on what it is you're interested in, whether you want tips on how to live your best life, which is my name of my blog, or if you just want kind of a little bit of encouragement, or if you want to learn more about rest, I'm giving you all the different topics that I sh share about within the first one third of the screen. You don't want people to have to scroll through your entire website to find out where your lead magnet's at. It should be easy for them to find it. Because even if for whatever reason, you have a super simple name, Sue Jones, and who could mess that up, right? So you're gonna use that to send people to your website to get your lead magnet. You don't want them to have to search everywhere on that site to figure out where your lead magnet is located at. It needs to be simple and easy to find. 
another place that many authors are missing out on sharing their lead magnet is in their Amazon author profile. Notice in the yellow, visit restquiz.com to take Dr. Dalton Smith's free personal rest assessment. Very first thing that I share on my author profile. And this is why, because when people are interested in your book and they go and they click on the book and they're reading about the book and they're learning about what the book's about, oftentimes they wanna know more about you as the author. And so they'll go read a little bit on your author profile. And if you have offered a freebie on your profile, even if they choose not to buy the book at that time, they may want to engage with that lead magnet, that freebie that you're offering, which now has added them to your list and gives you an opportunity to continue the conversation long after that initial glance they had with you. So many people are missing out on this. If you don't have an author profile on Amazon, then that's the first thing you need to fix. But then after that, make sure that you're mentioning your lead magnet. And as you can see, you can actually add on your blog post so many different ways to engage people with that platform for free. And so make sure that you're doing that. Also, if your books are available in ebook form, ebook form allows you to have clickable links within your book. And so this is from a friend of mine who has an ebook that's been doing very well. And you will notice under the endorsement, the very first link that someone can click as they're going through his book, this is the table of contents, which is where you can click the links, says, my free gift for you. What do you think that is? It's a lead magnet related to his book. This is the, this is the cool thing about this. In the look before you buy section of eBooks, where you're able to see the table of contents and see a couple of pages in the back cover content, this pops up. So even when someone doesn't buy his book, but have gotten to the point where they are engaging enough that they're looking inside of the contents of the book, he is offering them that free gift. You'll notice he offers it again after the conclusion. So after the book is over, he offers it again to those who have purchased and gone all the way through who maybe didn't think that they needed to sign up with it because they already bought the book. He offers it again. And in the beginning, for those who have yet to even buy the book, he has offered it. This is how you get people added to your list. This is how you get your readers to become part of your tribe so that you're not always having to, with each new book you come out with, go find these people all over again, start from zero and try to figure out how you're going to get in front of everybody so that they know about this new book. You've already got them in your system. You already have them on your subscriber list and you can let them know when new things are coming out. You can have them engage with you, help let them help you pick your cover designs to know what is actually things that your audience enjoy. You can even use them as beta readers. You can have them on your launch team. When you have this built up email list, you have your dedicated fans and you control it. Unlike on social media, for social media has the control over how many people see your post and a control over what content is shared with them. When they're on your email list, you have control over what is shared, how often you shared, what they're seeing. Other ways of placing your lead magnet where people can see it is if you're doing any type of online media. If you are writing guest posts, guest blog posts for other people, if you are being interviewed by anyone, this was one with Well Plus Good, where they listed my quiz along with the eight quizzes everybody should take. Number one was Myers-Briggs. Number two was the five love language. And mine was number three. Can you imagine how many people jumped on that quiz after that? The quiz is a lead magnet. Does it share great information? Yes, it does. Does it help people even if they don't buy the book? Yes, it does. But for those who actually engage with it and they can really see the benefit, they automatically want more because all you've done is just let them get a taste of what you can provide for them. And you're giving them a free taste. So people realize if this is the, what it 
If this is the amount of value that this person provides for free, what are they going to give me when I actually buy that $25 book? They understand that this is the next step that I need to take if they want to know more. And you always want it to be clickable. So notice that that seven different types of rest is clickable. Whenever you write a guest blog post, even if it's not about your specific topic but, and they don't let you kind of talk about necessarily your lead magnet, you can still include it. This is the trick. So in your bio section, anytime you have a bio section that you get to share online where it says learn, where, where at the end of the bio, you've talked about yourself and who you are and you know they only give you like 150 either words or characters to do this. So at the end, you want to mention your lead magnet. So you're, you may say something along the lines of, if you'd like to learn more about whatever your topic is, I have a free mini course that you can receive at and include the lead magnet URL. Now, this is what's important about that. So they've read whatever guest blog post you provided and they're now reading a little bit about you, which is great. If you put learn more about me at and you put your author website, they've read your article, they read your bio, they probably don't want to learn more about you. I mean, let's be honest, they, they know everything they need to know from that little bit of information. But if you're offering them something that is a benefit to them that they want, and that will take them over into your lead magnet website and ultimately can get them on your list. Now, there are many other places that you can place your lead magnet. So I want to make sure that we touch on a few of those. One is your email signature box. So if you, how many emails do you probably send out in a day, right? Make sure that you allow yourself to have space in your email signature box to share about your lead magnet, to share about how people can actually engage with something that they could be interested in. Think about other places that you can include that, such as on bookmarks or promotional material. If you have an author table, let's say you go to an event and you've, have, you've made up some rack cards that you're going to hand out to people who don't buy the book, or if you go someplace where they're not allowing you to sell books, right now in the time of COVID where there's so much social distancing, even if you are allowed to have an in-person event, what I'm finding is, Sometimes they'll tell you like an event I'm going to this weekend is that you're not uh, we're not going to be able to have an author table because we don't really want all these people coming up and, and congregating in the middle of the, the foyer and kind of taking up space. We want people to go in and go out. So in those situations, you can have some promotional material that gives some information about your book. We call them rat cards. It's just kind of like a little flyer or handout. And you can include your lead magnet on there. So even after getting the, the little promotional material, they now can engage with you further by going into your lead magnet. I like to actually include a Q, a Q, I think they're called QR code. It's the little code where you can scan with your phone and takes them directly into the lead magnet. That works really well because then people don't even have to type it out. You don't. You don't you have to worry about if they type it in correctly. If you're handing them something like promotional material, make one of those little codes where all they got to do is scan it with their phone and it'll go directly into your lead magnet. The other way of including lead magnets just kind of organically within your world would be within your social media post. So if you're on your Facebook page and you're talking about something related to your book, Sometimes you're going to put your link to go buy the book. Yes, that should be done. Sometimes you should list your lead magnet. Because even if someone's not ready to purchase, you can still get them on your list. And so make sure to include, if you put up a really great meme that maybe has a quote about your book and a little picture on the side and some information about coming soon or or um now available and you have all of these little cute things on the image that you put up on Instagram, you can include in your, your links, the bio section, your link to your lead magnet so that when people want to learn more, they can go and engage with the lead magnet, which will help you also grow your list. If you're a speaker, learn how to in incorporate 
your link magnet URL within your presentation. And it can be done so naturally. So you are sharing about whatever topic you're speaking on. And if you're and if that topic is related to your book, then as you're sharing about it, you can also say, I also have a free assessment, a free quiz, a free ebook, a free action guide, a free, a free course, whatever it is that you may want to participate in or engage with at, and you share the URL. And then you keep talking about whatever it is that you're talking about. It doesn't have to look like this big production. You just naturally incorporate it within the conversation. And because it's something you're giving them, it doesn't seem like a sales pitch because it's not. You're not selling them anything in the moment. You are notifying them of a free gift that you have for them. And I always say, mention it in the middle of your presentation somewhere naturally and mention it again at the end because that way you're more likely to get people to remember that custom URL and be able to further engage with it. You want to share doing the same thing during every media interview. And another thing that you can do is call influencer marketing. So if you have an author friend or an acquaintance who maybe has more followers than you, maybe they have just a bigger platform than you, but they are someone who would be happy to share about your lead magnet with their people, then consider asking them to do so. Ask them to send out an email to their list sharing about your lead magnet. That is way more effective than having them share about your book. I know you wrote the book. You want to sell the book. It can't always be conversation about the book because people are leery of that at this point. You want to to approach it just a little bit different. And that's where the lead magnet comes in. That's the same thing with, if you've ever been on a podcast or radio interview, the host, and I host a podcast, so I'm well aware of this just in my own interactions with authors. They want to just talk about the book and they, they keep telling you about the book. And it's like, I really want you to tell me about you and your story and you know, I want to have a great conversation about the topic, but I don't want every other word to be buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, because that is not a great conversation. That gets very old and that will get people turning off on listening to you. However, when you are offering something that is a freebie of value, people want to hear about that. And it can naturally be incorporated within those conversations without it feeling salty. Now, of course, Every great host is going to mention your book. Every great host is going to at least once tell them they should get a copy of it. Let the host do that, not you, because that is how you continue to get more media opportunities because you're seen as a great guest. And the same thing with influencer marketing, allow the influencer to talk about your book and allow them to share whatever they want to share with how they interacted with your book and then have the focus also be on that lead magnet. Because now if that person has 100,000 people on their list, and even if just 10% of them signed up for your lead magnet, you've already grown your author platform significantly with one interaction. Now, as I mentioned, the media is a great way of building your author platform. Media plus an effective lead magnet will always equal author platform growth. And so you want to get as much media as possible. And a lot of that can be things you get on your own. Everything that you see here are things that I booked myself. I call it being your own publicist. So this is what I like to teach authors oftentimes of how to be your own publicist, because you don't have to spend $5,000 a month necessarily to do that. There are ways you can actually reach out and engage and be your own publicist and take that those opportunities to the next level by using your lead magnet and getting it in front of that audience. Now, one of the things that happens when you're doing that, as your platform grows, then you sell more books because that lead magnet is then going to lead people into that call to action that will result in them buying books. Now, the first one is an Amazon bestseller. Um, list that I hit somewhere about a, a right around probably a year after the book was out. 
And so you can see there was about 200 or so reviews at that time. Now, if you go on Amazon, there's almost 500 reviews. So it continues to grow. That process just continues. And Barnes and Noble's bestseller list is when you are the top of the top 100 books on their site. So it's a little bit different level of hit that you have to get to, to get that green tag, but it got there. And it got there from a media interview combined with an effective lead magnet that got people into my funnel, into my nurture sequence, where they were seeing and hearing about the content on a regular basis with a call to action to purchase the book. Now, I want you to think about where are you missing some opportunities? Now, if you have any questions, feel free to jot those over into the chat as we're going through some of these op missed opportunities that you may be having. And I want you to think about not only what lead magnet, if you don't already have one, do you need? Where are you missing placing your lead magnet that would allow you to get more growth and more exposure? And I also want you to think about who is it that you might be able to partner with to get more exposure to your lead magnet? So what can you offer digitally? And yes, it needs to be digital. You don't want to have to be in a position where you have to personally fulfill your lead magnet all the time. Now, occasionally it's okay to have a couple of those, like we're gonna do 15 minute laser strategy sessions in certain situations where you are personally delivering the lead magnet in real time, you're having a call with someone. The majority of the time your lead magnet should be digital. You wanna automate it. You want it so that it works even if you are asleep and you want it to be something that they, that your reader, potential reader cannot resist, that they would want it because it is answering a question, helping them realize a desire or a dream or motivating or encouraging them into a new area. And you want that to be valuable enough that they will give you your, their email address. Then once you have that email address, you have to take responsibility to nurture that relationship. You want to go ahead and set up a sequence of a few emails where you're going to connect back with them after that welcome email to really just make them feel at home within your environment, to let them know more about you and about what you do and who you are. You want to make sure you include that call to action. You want to ask them to purchase. You want to let them know of any other product that you may have available. And you want to think about before every media and speaking opportunity, how will you incorporate verbiage about your lead magnet into the conversation? When you're creating those sound bites for that interview, make sure that you create at least one sound bite that mentions your lead magnet. Now, what is the next step that you personally need to take? to begin to use lead magnets for within publication to help you transition from an author who is just writing great books that no one's reading to one who's writing great books that are being sold in mass and that are connecting with your readers in a way that you're not just writing one book, but you have multiple books that are going to come out. And every time you release a book, there's already an audience in place who wants that information and wants to hear and know more. So integrate your tribe with your opportunities. Do not do a single interview from this point forward without having a tribe integration component, without having a way for those who listen to you and hear you and want to know more to be able to engage with you long past that interview after it's over. And really don't leave money on the table. All those interviews, I don't care where it's at or who you're doing it with, if you are not making it available to people after the fact to continue to learn more, you are leaving money on the table. And there are books that could have been sold that are not being sold simply because they, the information was great but their ability to reconnect and even get back to the book was lost in the process. Your goal is not a one-time contact where you just give a fantastic interview. Your goal is to bring those people who are listening to you into the fold and to build a relationship with them 
from that moment forward. Treat that email list as you get people on it. Treat it like their family. Make sure that you are, are respectful of their time after they have given you their email address. If you have an email, uh, email list that you have not sent anything to in two months, consider going back in there and apologizing to your list, letting them know that you got busy with my email list. One of the things I'm often telling them if when I'm in writing mode, when I have another book coming out, I'll say, hey, guys, I'm not going to be on here every other week, which is my normal sequence of sending information after they get on the list and have been on it a while, I send something every two weeks. And so if I'm really busy writing, I might say, hey guys, I'm not gonna be able to jump on for, for as often. So I'm just gonna check in to let you guys know I'm in writing mode, the next book's coming. It could be three sentences, but now I'm respecting their time and being on my list to let them know, hey, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just busy writing and doing what you are on here for me to do. So treat your tribe with respect. And what happens is when that next book comes out and I send them an email saying it's here, it's available, it hits bestseller list because they all jump on and buy. And that's the same thing that I want for you. So if you if you would like to learn more about me, you can go to ichoosemybestlife.com slash author support to learn more about who I am and how I like to actually help grow and do this process. And I want to make sure that each and every one of you takes time today to jump into some of the booths to see what other authors are doing, to engage with this process of learning from each other, because really that's a great way of moving forward within your author journey. Take care.